In this video, we'll be talking about how to get rid of the ugly white fringes that seem to plague so many people when using transparent textures in Unity. So here we are in Photoshop, and we have some red strokes on the left and blue strokes on the right. Now the strokes are exactly 40% red on the left and 40% blue on the right. We will now turn on some solid color layers, which are underneath the bristle brush layers, and we can't even see those layers anymore. Despite the fact that these solid colors are underneath, and these bristle layers are blending into that, the colors are only 40% red or blue with a mask, essentially. So we do not, despite the fact that we see, seem to see on the outskirts of these lines, darker colors here. We see like bright blue here and slightly darker as it blends to black. Um, it's not actually what's happening. It's just in the, in the layer itself. It's happening because of the blend. So if we had uh, lighter colors here, now it appears that we have you know, darker strokes in the middle and lighter on the outside. So the stroke itself is purely one color here. And that's the standard for a Photoshop brush to just blend uh, or paint a color with a mask on it. You, might not, you don't think of it that way, but that's actually what's happening. So let's go ahead and see what this looked like you know, when I was painting it. And so we just had a black background and red and blue. So we'll save that in Photoshop and go into Unity. And we saw the fringes for a moment, but now we don't see them anymore. So the reason that is, is that we're not actually blending anything. We have a black background underneath, but the plane itself is just RGB. There's no blending going on. Um, the, there is an alpha channel here, but it's pure white, so it's, you're not getting a blend of anything underneath. So that's obviously not right. We need to actually be blending these colors in uh, to the background and not having a solid color in between the strokes. So we can turn off the background layer and save that and go back into Unity and see what happens. Now we see that we, we're seeing the transparency, which is represented here by uh, the grid of white and gray. So go back into Unity, wait for that to load up, and there are the fringes. So again, we have the black background underneath, and we can see a blend of this image with black here, and then gray on the outside. And we also, if we uh, turn on a red and blue square underneath, turn off this black layer, then it just looks absolutely horrid. This should be pure red on the left. See underneath we have this vertex color mesh. So pure red on the left, pure blue on the right, but instead we have the, this mix of white in there. And that is because when you save the image out of Photoshop and you don't actually and you haven't made an alpha channel yourself, what's gonna happen is that the places where you have transparency in Photoshop will be filled in with white. Now you'll have the correct alpha mask. You can see all the right strokes here but you're not blending in pure red over here, you're blending in instead a mixture of red and white at the edges. So that's why you have all these fringes. So we need to do something about that. So as I'll show you in a moment, it's pretty easy to get the correct alpha channel out of Photoshop, um, the one that it constructed that we saw in Unity, but there's no way that I have ever heard of to be able to get the right RGB channels. Now, despite the fact that Photoshop knows what obviously knows what it needs to be, um, where you know all this, these lines are red with some sort of mask and blue with some sort of mask, there's no way for it to tell you that, to get it into a background layer or something. And I think that's really stupid. And I think that when you go into Unity and you see this image, we shouldn't be having white here. We should be having you know red. There's, why is there white? There's no reason for it. But whatever, that's how it is. We have to reconstruct it ourselves. So, go back into Photoshop, and we'll start off by making that alpha channel. So we're gonna look at whatever we wanna see, so have all the layers visible that we want to actually represent this image with the transparency too. And then we'll uh, take this and merge it onto a new layer. So, the command is not available from the menu. Um, it, you have merge visible, but if you just do merge visible from the layer menu, then you'll lose all of your other layers. So what you actually want to do is take whatever keyboard shortcut that is. For me, it's Shift Command E, and hold Option along with that. I guess it would be Alt and Windows. So Shift Option Command E, and now we have a layer that is 
whatever we had um, visible merged onto a flattened layer. Okay, so we're going to get the alpha channel out of that because the strokes are the appropriate shape. We just don't have the right RGB channel yet. Uh, channels. So command click on that, and we'll get a selection that is the ma transparency of that layer, which looks really cool against a black background. I think. Nice. So <laughs> take that off, and then we'll hit the quick mask button. And that will, if we option click on that, then we'll see that mask in a, in a mat, uh, see the out, the transparency in the mask, and this will be a nice placeholder for the future if we ever want to use the original um, alpha channel that we're going to make. So copy this, go into the channels uh, panel, make a new alpha channel, and then paste that in there. So now now we have our alpha, and that's good but we still need to use our RGB. So we're not going to be using this mask. So we'll turn that off by shift clicking on it. And we need to reconstruct the RGB channels. In this case, it's really it would be really simple to do because it's just that, but most images are not going to be as simple as red, you know, two colors, one for each side. So instead, I'm going to use a filter now I learned about this filter through the Unity forum, so thanks people for telling me about that. And it is free. It is from a company called Flaming Pear. And I'll give you the a website, uh, the web address um, in the description for this video. And the particular filter we want is Solidify, and even more particular, Solidify C works best in my experience. So it'll take all the RGB channels and expand them into the transparent areas of the channel. So solidify C, and it looks almost like what we had before with a straight line down the middle. It's not exactly right because right around here and there, there is nothing in the original image, so it just does its best guess. It's taking, it's taking all this stuff and expanding it, so when different colors meet, it has to guess and it doesn't matter that this isn't exactly right because there's no color there anyway. Um, so right here, it doesn't matter that it's blue because this is going to be black in the alpha channel. So that is exactly what we need. So we're going to go ahead and save this and go back to Unity. And then we'll turn after that saves. So there's our RGB. There's our A. And we'll turn this on. And... Things are looking really good against the... We're not, not having any fringes. Let's go ahead and look at it against um, the black background. No fringes at all. Looks like a nice straight line down the middle. Everything is good. And we'll look at it finally against the square with the two colors. And it's blending into that square. We're seeing a little bit of error here, but that's only because of the resolution of the image. Because the other plane is using vertex colors, so it's resolution independent, and the mesh with the texture on it is not resolution independent. So this is, as, you know, the best we can expect to get. And you'll never be blending in, in real world use a texture like this against a texture uh, against a, a mesh like that. So more realistically, again, we'll be having something like that, and that is how you take care of your white fringes.